decide at this day. Very good. So why worry about the federal laws when the state can fix their own problems? Okay, thank you. Thank very much. A question of this witness, one more? No, no more questions. No more questions? Not at Dennis this Fields can go on and on, not even asking a question, no, no, stating an opinion, and I have a little bit of a question. We're having a long, hard day here. And my question Let's is very legitimate. Down. This gentleman, it was finished testifying. And I was going to ask him, Madam Chair, if this law were passed, he would go back to smoking marijuana because it the would then be legal. No. Thank you. Richard Paul. I'm back. Did you miss me? Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm going to be brief for this time. I hope so. I'm going to be brief for this Thank time, you. and I'm not going to repeat any of my earlier uh, uh, comments. The <laughs> there have been questions about alcohol and uh, marijuana. I'm in an unusual position in that from 18 years old to 40 years old, I was a member of Alcoholics Anonymous, and I maintained sobriety during that period. Uh, the first thing is somebody asked if there was a mar oh, marijuana anonymous. No, there's a narcotics anonymous, there's a cocaine anonymous, there's cigarettes anonymous, there's sex anonymous, there's sex and love anonymous, but there is no marijuana anonymous because nobody would go. Most people smoked pot when they were kids and most people just uh, So why would they go to marijuana anonymous? Uh, the other thing that I wanted uh, to mention is that there are a great many people in Alcoholics Anonymous who do smoke marijuana, continue to smoke marijuana, continue to live good lives, and the statistics that I have seen show that if you are an alcoholic and you smoke marijuana, you are more likely, not less, to maintain abstinence from alcohol. And alcohol is a very, very dangerous drug. Alcohol is the only drug whose withdrawal will actually kill you. You can die of it. Pot withdrawal, eh, you get a little grumpy. Oh well, it's no big deal. Um, the other thing uh, that I wanted to say about, uh, oh. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is it's been a long day and have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> Charles Renford. You say five minutes, but I'd like yeah, you to cut that to fine. two, please. <laughs> I'm much more of a, a writer than a public speaker, so I just need two seconds. Um, okay. I work in one, two. One, two, and one. Two. <laughs> <laughs> so, and your name oh. is Charles oh, Renford. Yeah, Riverburn? Riverburn. Riverburn. So, my academic background is philosophy. Uh, my professional background is the natural product industry. I work for one of the largest uh, supplement producers in the country. Uh, I study plants for a living. Uh, let me just show you the stack of this research. This is all herbs from around the world that are up and coming. They're pretty good chunk that I've been looking at. And I don't really know anything about these plants. I'm mostly familiar with Western herbs, Ayurvedic herbs, and Chinese herbs. Okay, to speak about Chinese herbs very quickly, uh, Chinese medicine is probably the oldest form of medicine on the planet. And cannabis has been used as a Chinese medicine throughout that entire period. Uh, like I said, I've studied plants uh, for fun and as a profession. I can tell you without a doubt that cannabis is the most useful plant in the world. Uh, it is astonishing to me that it is illegal. Uh, just unbelievable. We are supposed to be the land of the free. We're, when we grow up, we're taught, this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I grow up to find out, no, it is not. You are not free. Because you can go to jail for a plant, a very useful plant. Um, like I said, I've studied these. Uh, there was comments made earlier, um, is it Gail, yeah. Dr. Gail, uh, about cancer research. Uh, there's an abundance of cancer research. Uh, I pulled this out of my folder. This is from uh, the first college class that I took, uh, Cannabis Sativa. I'll just read you a little blurb. The tumor inhibiting effect, the in vitro inhibiting effect of the Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, which is THC, active constituent, uh, has been documented. The growth of transplanted lung tumors has been documented. So there's tons of research. This is from long ago, in fact. So please, I beg you to go in 
do some of this research because it is available. There's uh, you know university research available to you. Um, and I really loved uh, Representative Warden's comments earlier, treating it like tomatoes and roses and oregano, because that's all it is, just another herb. These are all just plants, and they are our friends. They're not here to hurt us. Plants don't hurt anyone. It's choices that hurt people. So don't let your choices hurt more people in the future. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Representative Valancourt. You mentioned you were a writer, which brings something to mind. I've heard, and maybe I used something when I was in the Netherlands, legally, <laughs> in Amsterdam in the past, and got some of the greatest ideas for writing I've ever had in my life. Is it true that some of the greatest literature has been written by people that were indulging? Yeah, that's, I mean, obviously, I think this is fairly common knowledge that many of our great artists and inventors throughout history have used various substances. Maybe that has hurt them, too, but they've also contributed greatly to our society. Um, but whether, whether or not any of these things are harmful, alcohol is obviously harmful, much more harmful than any of the other drugs, really. Uh, but whether or not they're harmful, it does come back to the point that's been made numerous times. It's a personal choice. It's a personal liberty to choose how you will pursue happiness. So I love the point that was made earlier. This is the pursuit of happiness. Uh, I'll tell you, if one of these bills does make it and is voted upon, which it does, it, at least it deserves a vote, right? So let's, let's have a vote on it. Uh, but if it makes it, and it actually does, because we become the third state in the union to legalize cannabis, I will guarantee you there will be an abundance of wealth and prosperity that will fall upon that. There will be uh, no end to what good it will do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> We're talking about the female cannabis plant Correct. as being beneficial. Would you also say that the male plant I would, I would tell you that the shoes, and pants, and shirt that I'm wearing is made from hemp. And it is a tremendous fiber. You can build houses with it, you can build cars with it, you can build everything with it. It's expensive. Okay. Oh, with, only because of, yeah, correct. <laughs> because it's not fun. But we have to buy all of our... From overseas. From, yeah, well, primarily from Canada. So I wanted to come and speak on the industrial hemp thing, but I ended up running out of time. I had to leave. But we sell all kinds of hemp products. The hemp oil, the hemp seeds is a protein. It's tremendous for your health. On and on. Representative Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Have you uh, heard anything to the fact that uh, Hampshire is just a misspelling? That what Hampshire? Well, I've never run into Ham. And most shires are named for what dominates their shire. I've heard that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick question. In your study of, of, of cannabis, uh, are there any health concerns that have ever made you doubt, question, wonder? Well, I think that uh, smoking anything is going to be somewhat uh, harmful to your lungs. But the point I made earlier, uh, you can eat it, you can vaporize it, you can do all sorts of things with it. The, uh, like I said earlier, the, the oil of the seed, you know, the oil of the bud itself you can consume. There's uh, many ways around the harmful aspects of smoking. Well, no, I'm not just talking about smoking, the actual... No, in, the injection of the substance, no. In fact, uh, go check out this on the Google machine. The, uh, they're now juicing the leaves and buds and taking it raw. Because you don't actually get high from taking it raw. It has to be combusted, combusted with heat, which is what causes the high reaction that you get. So, uh, look into that, definitely. Eating it raw is actually uh, super antioxidant. Somebody else made this point. There is an abundance of research that demonstrates how valuable it is. Please. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Carl Ivan Friedman.